As you can see from the mess back here, we're out crabbing again today uh, for Dungeness crabs. And we thought it might be helpful to tell you basically from the bottom to the top what we're using and, and how we're deploying these things. So there are a number of different crab traps that we use. This one happens to be made by Promar. It's, it's what we probably use the most. They're real simple. They're very light, which is good and bad. Uh, they, they're collapsible, so you could actually fold them down flat if you wanted to, and that enables you to carry more with you. And uh, because they're really light, we usually weight the bottoms of them with rebar. We just cut rebar to length, and we use twi um, uh, plastic ties to attach them to the bottom of the trap. And that gives them a little bit of weight. That's important because most of the places we crab have current, and if you don't weight the traps, the, the traps can go walking off in the current and you'll think somebody stole them, but it, uh, more likely the current just took them away from you and they're out there uh, being derelict crab gear, which we don't want to do. With these light pots, in addition to putting rebar on the bottom, they have four doors on each side that the crabs can come in. These doors are also very light. In current, the current and weeds can actually blow the doors open like this and crabs can get in, but then they can very easily get out too. So we typically attach pencil lead to the doors. You can see we've rolled uh, several wraps of pencil lead around this door. It probably weighs, I would guess, three or four ounces. The crabs have no, no problem getting in. They're pretty, pretty strong and uh, that helps keep them from getting out. With the Promar uh, crab traps, it's best for these square type traps if you bring them up level. So we attach to this trap a Promar harness. And it's just a four point attachment that brings the, tr the crab trap up straight when you're pulling it through the water. A few other things about the trap, the trap itself I'll mention. On the top, it's got this rock cord. It's just cotton twine attached to a bungee cord, attached to a hook. And that's used to secure this door. So when, you, when you're baiting the trap or you're sorting through your, your, tra your crabs after you've brought them up, you'll need to open the door. That's how you do it. Very easy to do. You just pull it over like that. It doesn't have to be super tight. The rot cord is designed, this cotton twine, is designed to decay over time. That way if you do lose your, your crab trap, it becomes derelict crab gear. Eventually this cord will rot and the crabs will be able to get, get out of the trap. You'll see this in the bottom of this crab trap, there's a big blue mesh bag. And it's full of all kinds of fish parts from our fishing adventures earlier uh, this summer. And a number of baits will work for Dungeness crabs. A lot of people like to use chicken. The cheap cuts like the drumsticks and the thighs work good. The nice thing about chicken is seals are not interested in them. If you use fish, uh, seals are much more interested in it, but if you take your fish parts and you actually put them in a bag like this, the seals don't seem to want to mess with it. So we always put our bait in these heavy duty mesh bags, the same kind of bags we use, only smaller, for our halibut um, um, chum pots. We want this bag to hang, not hang, but sit basically in the center of the trap so that crabs can come in from all four doors. We think that's that's an important thing. So when we are ready to send this down, we'll pull the line up through one of the center holes in the crab trap. And we'll pull it basically as far as we can over to one side or another and clip the halibut clip onto the trap. And that keeps the chum bag, the bait bag basically, right in the center of the trap so they can get in all four doors that problem. Okay, and we talked a little bit about the harness already. Now I'll start talking about how what we have above the harness going all the way up to the floats. Leaded crab line. I think this is 3 8 inch. It could be 5 16 I'm not sure, but it's one or the other. Leaded sinks. It's got little fine strands of lead incorporated into the braid. And what that does is uh, it keeps your line down in the water so that as you're approaching it or other boats happen to be approaching it, there isn't a bunch of floating line on the surface to get caught in their propeller or your propeller. 
which would be bad juju. So braided line, we attach it to the four point harness with a bowline knot. It's, bowline's a great way to do it. You can untie it. Uh, it never comes untied by itself. It's, it's just a great knot. And, uh, depending on how deep you're fishing, you'll need a certain amount of crab line. For instance, if we're fishing uh, 25, 30 feet of water like we do a lot, we typically use about 50 feet, feet of this leaded line uh, between us and our buoys. If you're going to fish deeper, you'll want a longer length of line. So a good plan might be to say have a length of 50 foot rope with a loop on the end of it that you can attach to another length rope that has loops on the end of it with loop-to-loop -loop connections. It's a good way to do it. You don't have to, but since we're crabbing a lot in 30, 30 feet or less, 50 feet of rope is generally plenty for us. As we work our way up the crab line, this is all leaded line that I've been pulling on here. So now we're up at the end of our 50 foot feet of lead line, and we've got a basically a big crabbing buoy here, and it's got name and identification numbers on it. Uh, whatever is required by the state that you're in um, is what you want to put on here. And where we're at right now, name and phone number is all we got on here. So here's our first buoy. You could just use one, but two is better. Uh, we like to use two. And we like to rig these buoys such that they don't slide up and down the line, that they're fixed. That way, when we hook them with our, uh, hook the line, say, between these two buoys with our boat hook, and pull it in, this doesn't just continually slide down the line. We gotta chase it. So one buoy connected to a length of not lead line, floating line, just braided, uh, braided nylon, which floats, connected to a second buoy. Why two buoys? Because it's easier to see them from a distance when you're trying to find them, especially if the weather's bad, wind, rain, fog, all kinds of stuff make the, makes these things extremely hard to find sometimes. Second, between the two buoys, it gives you a great place to reach out with a boat hook. I, th I consider this to be an essential piece of equipment. And when I use telescopes, I think it goes up to like, I don't know, 10 feet, nine feet. I can reach out with my boat hook between the buoys, catch the line so that I can then prepare to pull the pot. When we put all these fish parts in the bag, we don't just use the frozen fish parts. We do some things to them ahead of time. And one of the things that we found to be vital to our success and tends to load the pots much faster than if you don't, is to marinate your baits and pro procure crab and shrimp attractive. This stuff really works. And what we'll typically do is take our fish parts, carcasses, whatever, chop them into pieces, put them in a big five gallon bucket, and then we'll have like, two thirds to three quarters of a bucket full of bait, maybe even more. And we'll put about half the bottle of crab and shrimp attractant on them, preferably the night before and let that stuff soak in. We found that when we do that, the, the, the pots definitely seem to fill up faster with more crabs. A couple other things uh, to keep in mind is these pots, you know, I mean, it's not that heavy like this. It probably weighs about, with the rebar and stuff and the bait in it, maybe 15 pounds. Um, but when it's filled up with crabs, it might weigh 25, 30 pounds, and it's awkward pulling it over the side of the boat like this. Um, something that is very helpful is some sort of crab davit like this one here. Now, when I had this boat built by Rugjet Boatworks, I asked them to give me a crab davit. So they put the mounting hardware in here, and of course gave me the crab davit with the big pulley. And that makes it a little bit easier to pull the pots and to keep them from bashing into your boat when they, when they approach the surface. Another item that I have found so important, so important for almost all of the fishing that I do is my Minn Kota Riptide Tarova. It's a bow mounted electric trolling motor and it's back, Marcus is filming, it's back behind the back there, has a remote control. And right now, as we're talking, the current's going a couple miles an hour. We don't have an anchor out. We've got the Minn Kota on spot lock, which is a virtual anchor, and it's just holding us here while we're doing our filming. We also use this crabbing. And the way that I use it is I'll approach the, the crab lines, the buoys basically, alongside them using both my kicker motor and the Riptide Tarova. And when I get close to it, Marcus will hook the uh, 
the buoys, load them up in the crab davit, and then it'll start pulling pots. And I'll keep motoring up current towards where the crab pot is. Once we're about over the spot where that crab pot is, I hit spot lock, put the kicker motor in neutral, the boat sits there in one place and we can pull the crab pot without having to worry about drifting way off our line into a sandbar, uh, tangling up in another crab pot somewhere. It's just, this thing has been so valuable to me. I tell you, if you have a big open sled like this or even a windshield boat, it might be worth considering getting one of these added to your, your vessel. Thing that you should probably have is a device to measure your crabs. Uh, the legal limit for crabs varies from state to state, and you can buy uh, inexpensive plastic measurers. We prefer this one made by Lelock, which is a measurer, of course, but it's also designed to fit over the top of a five gallon bucket, like so, and it enables you to clean your crabs easily. This thing both kills the crab when you basically you're going to split them over the top of this. And it, the result of cleaning them that way is you wind up with two clusters with the legs attached, no guts. They take up half as much space in your kettle. It's just a, a really good way to do it. And the Lelock Crab Cracker is made out of solid aluminum. It's welded and it's anodized. So if you buy this thing, it's going to last you for years and years and years. And it'll serve you no matter which state you happen to be crabbing in. So we're, we're fans of this particular device. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. Now crabs pinch, and they can pinch pretty dang hard. You won't like it if you're barehanded and a six or seven inch crab grabs hold of your finger. We found it extremely important to have a good pair of thick rubber gloves of some type, type for crabbing. Not just for handling the crabs, but for pulling the rope and a lot of the things that we're doing out here, baiting the pots because, you know, we've marinated this stuff in that Procure uh, crab and shrimp attractant, which is basically a mixture of oils and things get nasty. So having a good pair of thick rubber gloves will help protect your hands while you're out here on the water. Promar makes these ones, they're good ones. Don't cost too much, they last a long time. I'm going for the ride And by myself I am alive And I saw A couple of bits of Dungeness crabs And now we're back at camp basically And we're going to clean these crabs and cook them And today we're using a new tool New to the market called the Lelock Crab Cracker It's a great device It's got a variety of different measurements on here So whether you're crabbing in Alaska Or Washington or Oregon You can size your crabs with this thing and then when you get back to camp, it makes it really easy to clean your crabs. Basically, it's designed to fit in the top of a five gallon bucket like that. And it allows you to humanely kill the crabs and also get rid of the guts and keep all the mess contained inside the five gallon bucket. So it's a really handy tool to have. Here's how you use it. Take your crab, he's a little angry. Place them on top of the crab cracker, centered. Give him a little smack. That kills him. He won't bite you anymore. You can grab his legs, peel off the carapace. The guts will, most of the guts will be inside the carapace. You can just drop them in the bucket. Rip off the gills, like so, both sides. And you wind up with two crab clusters. There may be a little bit of guts left in there. You can just shake them out like that. Maybe pull off whatever little bit there is. Put your crab cluster in the clean bucket. Same thing over here. We're gonna shake the guts out. Pull off anything that doesn't automatically fling out. And then you got another clean crab cluster. This, by the way, when you do this, there's no risk of biotoxins because the biotoxins are usually in the guts of the crab. And also these take up about half as much space in your kettle as a full crab would. So you can cook more crabs in one batch. Very handy.